Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is smallest window containing 0, 1 and 2 and it is an easy level problem. So this problem basically says that we have to find the smallest substring which contains all the three values 0, 1 and 2 and if there does not exist any substring like this and we have to return minus 1. So what do we mean by the smallest substring? So the smallest substring is, is one which has the minimum length. Right. And all the values will be 0, 1 and 2 only. So we don't have to worry about any other value. So for example, in this particular case, we have 0, 1, 2 here. So the answer is 3. And in this case, we don't have 0. So the answer will be minus 1. Right. So this problem is a very simple two pointer problem. Let me just, uh, explain you how we can solve this. So first, let me just draw a rectangle. So let's say this is our array. We have certain values here. So from today on, I will be using a different note taking app. I found uh, some features in this particular application better. So that is why I am using it. So basically, let's say we have some values. We have some values A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right. We don't have to worry about these values for now. We want to understand the two pointers will got them first. Right. So what two pointers say is this. I will have, I am going to have two pointers. One is going to be called, let's say, my left pointer and one is going to be called my right pointer, right. So let's say this is right pointer R and this is left pointer L, right. So in this particular scenario, what I am trying to denote by these particular pointers, definition of pointers, let me just define this first. So if I have it here, my left pointer is going to denote the starting index of my current substring and my right pointer my right pointer is going to denote the next element i want to include in my substring so uh, basically you can have different definitions for your pointers specifically but the definition that i have used in my implementation would be that my right pointer will be containing the next element that i want to include in my substring and my left pointer will be the starting index of my current substring right and it does not uh, like uh, my implementation does not satisfy both of the conditions together it, when the uh, uh, like the process starts right because if you can see in this particular scenario if you see here both left and right pointers are pointing to this particular element but initially this a is not included it is the next element to be included right so it is satisfying the condition of the right pointer but it does not satisfy the condition of the left pointer so anyways when we start from this particular position what we do we see that our condition that is both 0 1 and 2 are not satisfied right now so what we do we include the element at the right pointer so a very general idea is when the condition is not being satisfied that means we don't have all the elements right here a very simple idea is to increase our subarray or increase our substring or increase our range. How can we increase our range? We can increase it by adding new elements. That is this one. Right. So we add the element at the R index or the right pointer. Right. Once we add this, this whole pointer is going to get incremented. So now we have our right pointer here. Right. Now we can figure out whether the condition is satisfied or not. If the condition is satisfied, in this case it will not be because there are only two elements here. But whenever the condition is satisfied, we know that our answer, answer is going to be minimum of r minus l comma answer, the previous answer, right? Why it is like, why is it like this? Because r minus l will be the length of the substring. Why? Again, because I have discussed that let's say this is the array and we have some elements here. So this is the starting index, this is the element that is to be included in the next iteration. That means this element is not currently included. If I do R minus L, I will get the length of this particular substring, which is my current selected substring, right? This is, this is why I do R minus L only, right? So once I have this particular information, whenever the condition is satisfied, I'm just directly going to take R minus L. And if my condition is not satisfied, what I do, I include the current element and I move on to the next index. So my next index will be R here, right? Again, I see my if my condition is satisfied, I do this particular thing. If my condition is not satisfied yet, then I will move on to the next index. So I come at this particular index, right? But there is one more thing that we have to do when our condition is not, not satisfied, right? 
So we incremented the index. Now let's say the condition gets satisfied. In this particular case, we have to increment our L as well. So what I'm saying is earlier what we were doing, our condition was not satisfied. All the three elements were not present. So we were trying to increment our range to make sure that the condition gets satisfied. But now that we know that our condition is satisfied, what we must aim to do is reduce our range to get the smallest answer. So basically now in this particular case, we would want to move this left pointer forward, right? So what we do, we remove the element from our current list of elements that is present at this particular position. After removing the element, I'm going to increment my left pointer one more space forward, right? So now it denotes that my current substring is now starting from this particular position that is where L stands, right? So this is how I'm going to keep on moving the left and the right pointers. If I, if my condition is not satisfied and I want to increase the range, I'm going to move my right pointer. If my condition is already satisfied, I want to decrease my range. I'm going to move my left pointer. Now, how, till how long are they going to move? R is only going to move till it is less than the size of the string, S dot size. Because once it reaches this particular position, that means I cannot add this particular element. So it cannot move any further, nor it can add this particular element, right? L is going to move till when? L is going to move well, L, while I, L is less than R, right? Although you could have uh, provided a much more suitable condition because we already know that uh, there must be at least three elements for the conditions to get satisfied. But we can still keep to be to keep it simple. We can still write L is less than R, right? So actually it will get triggered much more earlier because when the size of the substring is less than 2, our condition will not be satisfied and we will move on incrementing R rather than incrementing L, right? But just to keep that simple, we can just directly write while L is less than R. So these are the certain conditions that you need to take care of while moving your pointers. And I believe that is it for this particular problem. The only idea is if you, if, if the conditions are not satisfied, if you don't have, if you haven't find your desired substring, you will increment your range or the pointer R. If the condition is satisfied, you are going to increment your L pointer or in other words, you are going to decrement your range, right? So I have told you a very generic idea how to solve two pointer problems. Now let us see how we can apply this idea to our specific problem by looking at the code. So you see, first of all, I've created a vector of frequencies, which is going to store what are the number of zeros, one and zero twos in my current substring. Now I have initialized both L and R pointers with zero. I've initialized my OK variable with zero. So this OK is going to signify whether all of my conditions are satisfied or not. And I've initialized my answer with a very big value that is the NIST part eight in this particular case. Now I have two simple conditions while R is less than S dot size or L is less than R. So even if one of the condition is true, I'm going to enter this particular while loop. Now inside this while loop, if my conditions are not satisfied, condition means my criteria for a valid substring that is both all the elements 0, 1 and 2 should be present. If it is not satisfied and R is less than the size of the string, I'm going to add the element at the position R, right? So I'm doing plus plus F S of R minus 0 minus 0 Y because the element or the character will be converted into integer if I do this minus 0. So 0 in character will be converted into 0 in integer. And at the same position, I'm also doing post increment of R. That means after accessing this particular element, R is automatically going to get incremented. Now, if all the three elements are greater than zero, that is when I will set OK is equals to true. Otherwise, I'll set OK is equals to false. Now, if we did not enter this particular part, that means our conditions are already satisfied. If our conditions are satisfied and L is less than R, then I'm going to decrement the value that is present at the index L. And similarly, I'm going to post increment the value of L. Now again, I check if my condition is still satisfied or not. Based on that, I'll update the OK variable. After all of this has been executed, if my OK is true, I'll I'm going to update my answer. So this is very, very simple, right? Now, what I'm going to do at the end is, I'm going to return, if answer is equal to infinity, that means I was not able to find even a single answer. I'm going to return minus one, otherwise I'm going to return my answer value. So this was the solution to this particular problem. Now let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular solution works. So you see it passes all the test cases and this code is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.